Oh, hello again. This is Philip Steiger again with uh, thebest3d.com and uh, a daily dose of uh, PD Howler. Project Dog Waffle live here. Um, what we're going to look at now is kind of a variant to something we just saw earlier. Right? I'm going to clear that tool here, which is the, the symmetry or the mirror tool. And uh, essentially what you can do is, uh, as we saw earlier, paint in a vertical way uh, or in a horizontal symmetry. For instance, this one here. Uh, will show a vertical axis to give you horizontal symmetry right and as we noticed it's not a perfect symmetry and that's kind of intentional or a side effect of how we implemented that whichever way you want to look at it the beautiful thing is that it's not a perfect symmetry so you may for instance use that with some smearing tools uh, perhaps some of the modes like uh, paint smear like this I put a couple of dabs here or there and smear it and it's not going to be a perfect symmetry and that's that's really a good thing to have this way because then you essentially uh, don't get it to be just too perfect to mirror copy on one side and the other uh, so a little bit more like you actually painted one and you painted the other as well uh, you can tell that they are not exactly identical here um, but but sometimes you really want it totally perfectly identical or you just want to do other things and so right now we're going to look at the other modes and those are instead of uh, symmetrical painting modes those are called mirror modes a horizontal mirror what happens is that it applies it right away now in this case uh, it, it takes the right half and flips it over mirror side to the left and because they are not identical You'll actually see a little bit of a change on this one as it's getting to be a mirror copy of this one check See that it changed a little bit So now it is a perfect mirror copy of the one on the right side and notice I didn't have to paint It actually took the existing image and applied the mirror to that so you can take an existing image modify it by applying that mirror in a snap same thing with the vertical mirror and now it's basically looking at the upper right quadrant if i go and paint something in that upper right quadrant a couple of dabs here for instance it's going to do that and then mirror it to the other sides as well i still have that uh, mode uh, let me go back to perhaps the default mode and so i'm painting around here and it's painting it in the other areas too let's put some green now uh, so we we see that we can do that either by painting and it flips it over to the other side to do the mirror copies on the fly uh, we've seen also that it applied it with already something in there and it just modified it to be a symmetrical a mirror copy so it can actually take an existing image and you can also do another thing you can use the filters for instance you can take some of these filters like the transform filter uh, let's say the shift one right as you move this away Let's say I'm, I'm going to move it to the upper right. So click and drag here. As you move it, it's shifting it over and keeping that symmetry going, that mirror of action. Right, so there's a lot of different ways to use this. Let's have a couple of other ways, uh, a look at one or two other modes. Of course, the transform one. That's probably one of the best ways to use it. If you look at the, uh, the transform, you can grab it around, very similar to the shift we just did. But on top of that, you can also scale it and you can rotate it. And you can also tile it. Click here to enable tiling. So now we have a whole realm, a whole universe of new textures and patterns that we can create by rotating this and keep keeping it symmetrical or, or mirror enabled. All right, so that's a really fun thing to do. Uh, there are a, a few others that are also impressive in terms of what they do. Uh, here's one with the lighting tool. Uh, the lighting tool is interesting in and of itself, um, but one thing you have to keep in mind, because we have the mirror enabled here, um, it's not going to show the light zeros in the upper left corner. It is only looking at the upper right quadrant and That's where you're operating when you're in mirror mode and both axes are enabled All right, so one thing you could do though is uh, Disable that you could disable while you're in the mirror while you're using that tool You could go and disable the the mirror uh, But that's enough for right now Just keep in mind that you can get that mirroring enabled for, for use in a couple of ways one is on an existing image that you just want to flip around a couple of times and use the upper right quadrant in a mirror mode or you want to apply some filters and have them also go through the mirror transformation or again you want to paint just like doing the symmetrical painting mode but it's going to be a perfect picture uh, a mirror copy it's not going to have the slight imperfections that we keep on the symmetry side all right that's it for right now we've just uh, talked about mirror mode and that's something that I'm sure you'll enjoy as you create new patterns and textures. Uh, there's one more thing I wanted to show you and that's if we 
uh, go into a, an animation. So let's start from scratch here and um, let's take something a little bit smaller so we don't have too much trouble for this uh, screen capture uh, captivating that. Um, what I'd like to do is basically enable the mirror. Um, let's do horizontal and yeah why not let's do vertical too and just dab around here let's go play with uh, hot dog with the hot dog brush and paint around there okay but that's evidently a picture that's mirrored vertically and horizontally right and i'm really just painting in the upper right corner now i'm going to make this into an animation so go animation and create and let's say we want that to be a five seconds long animation five seconds and we're currently operating at 24 frames per second uh, we may want to change that um, let's say we want this fluid at 30 frames a second and so we need to perhaps reiterate here five seconds is what we need and that comes to a total of 150 frames roughly 109 megabytes are needed to store this in memory and we seem to have enough to do that okay that and so right now we have a short animation of well, pretty much identical frames nothing is moving yet can see them right there every frame is really a copy of that original starting image um, what I'm gonna do now is apply a transform a, a filter similar to what we did before right there when we went to the transform filter but instead of applying that just to this one frame right there may be rotating and so on I'm going to apply that to the whole frame sequence of the animation right, and for that of course we go to the animation menu and there's a timeline the timeline editor and that one is basically showing very similar filters all along this direction. Let's go and perhaps see it this way. And um, we go down to the transform where we see the transform. And perhaps we can apply some transform here. But you notice it's not keeping it in a mirror copy. It's not applying the mirror here in the preview. And it's also not going to apply it when we actually go and and render that so we have another step to do after that if we want to mirror it so here's what i'm going to do i'm going to show you how to do that we can perhaps uh let's let's say we keep it smaller we start this and then we at this size and then we we go let's reset it here so first frame will go smaller from there on so there you go then we go by this time here we'll make it about this small right keyframe that then we'll go a little bit upwards, like this. Uh, let's go diagonally, why not? Like this. And also start rotating. Right. Keyframe like that. And at this point, we'll stay where we are, but we keep rotating. And then finally, we'll also change the size back up to a larger size. And we'll go to the lower right corner and keep rotating all the way to the end. Let's make this like that at the end. All right, so we have basically a sequence of keyframes where things are changing over time and we'll just render that across the frame sequence this is the timeline in action and it's going to change the size then it's going to go up and rotate and it's going to go to the right and start going bigger again as it keeps rotating and then go down All right so we basically have keyframed a couple of uh, transformation states a series of, of positions and scales and so on so we have now a an animation where it does that it is not mirrored you notice it's only showing in the upper right corner okay and when i play it here or if i scrub through that ah notice that it's now actually applying it when i scrub through that so that's different if i only just played it it didn't do it and it didn't do it on all of the frames yet so I have a chance to actually apply the mirror afterwards. If I close this, I can still do that with the regular scrub bar or the animation bar as well. And that's basically because we're doing this mirror operation at the very end whenever there is a refresh needed. If we play it frame by frame or if we scrub through that, that's exactly what's happening there. So it's applying it as I'm watching it. The last second, last opportunity to see it is when it's actually refreshing the buffer here to show me the new buffer as I'm scrubbing through that. If I've covered each of each and every one of these frames, I will essentially have turned the whole sequence into a mirrored case where, where each frame is the mirror image from the upper right quadrant. So at this time it should be fairly clean and fully mirrored. Uh, there's still one or two that I skipped over. You can see it flicker a little bit. So you gotta go really so softly about that if you want to take that entire animation into a mirror. We'll probably change that in the future. I bet this is a really nice feature to have that probably we'll want to have as a separate little plugin. Should be easy to program 
um, and we'll just make that a separate uh, feature or maybe actually integrate it as an additional option in the timeline that would be a good way to do it too so we are looking at some other ways to make this even more funky and useful and I'm sure you'll be seeing a lot of updates coming on that side as well as you keep watching this channel